Let's unmute that microphone. Thank you, Addy and Addy. Welcome, one and all. You, you, you. No, not you. And you, welcome to the show. This is Doctor Who Legacy live stream. Well, hopefully we'll be joined by me and Susan and by Lee and by George Mann, author of um, the, the, the Engines of War Doctor Who novel. And I think I just saw the awesome... People from Bigger on the Inside as well in the chat. Did I not? I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I did. Our awesome little 8-bit friends. Yeah, Pixel, who are? Yeah, they're here. Oh, they were here. Well, I'm here. I'm here. That's the main thing. And we're going to be playing some Doctor Who. Now, hopefully, I'm, I'm waiting for Susan Lee to message me and tell me what time they're coming on and um, various little things. Um, I've got a nice little George Mann-related team for us to play with. Um, and, of course, we need to do various things in... Um, uh, in, in hell bent and playing through the season. So how is everybody? How is everyone? Uh, I think it, I better put on the, uh, the old doctor who hat, which still doesn't fit. The, the brain is still far too big, um, for it. Now, Susan tells me she has lots to talk about tonight. She tells me she has lots and lots and lots to talk about. So I need to get all of my talking kind of out of the way right now. So let's go talking. First of all, did you see the finale? What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? If you want to know what I thought, you'd have to watch my review. Because if I tell you now, then this becomes not so much the, the 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 Doctor Who legacy show as like the Doctor Who review show. And I already have a Doctor Who review show. And if you want to see the Doctor Who review show, you can go and watch that. But I do want to know what you think. Have you got any questions for George Mann or Susan or Lee? Have you got any questions for anyone else that might come on the show today? In which case, use exclamation mark question and put your question and it will appear in my magic box and I can make my magic box appear on the screen. And oh dear God, it looks like we're taking on the greatest president that the Time Lords have ever had with gems. But it's funny how often gems seem to work out. Yeah? Yeah? Hmm? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Agar, Agar Jagger Fest there saying, did everyone survive the finale? Well, it's very controversial, the finale. Some people loved it. Like all of the reviews, you know, IGN and The Guardian and, you know, I mean, obviously it looks like kind of British sites mainly, but, you know, the main, the big sites seem to really be very, very, very positive about it. Yes, Addy's Magic Box. Can I not say Addy's Magic Box? And Mr. Pigs is here. Hello, Mr. Pigs. I have to be very manly when I see it, say Mr. Pigs. Um, I went to a little curry meal this evening. I didn't actually stay very long. Basically, all, basically all my friends are out at a curry and I, I'm not there because I'm, I'm doing this with you guys. Um, so I kind of went for some poppadoms and to kind of say hi and stuff. But it is Christmas jumper night um, for my little friendship group. They are all sitting there wearing possibly the worst Christmas jumpers you have ever seen. Um, although maybe not. Maybe you have worse. We should have like a Christmas jumper stream, you know, where we all like you know, put on our Christmas jumpers and like Snapchat and we like put them around, you know, the screen, you know, we could have like, you know, various people kind of all around wearing our Christmas jumpers, maybe get some eggnog and cider and, you know, you know, various little bits of, you know, Christmassy things. Do you remember, the, was, it the, was it a New Year's show we had last year or a Christmas show last year? We, we played the Doctor Who trivia game, which is probably still on my desk from last year. Um, so, um, we should do that again. So it was fun. And oh dear God, Rassilon is getting closer and his weakness is blue, but I've come here with an all red team. Um, thank you to Labradite for helping me to put this team together. Um, I wanted one, obviously, that was a kind of a little bit manny. <laughs> um, so we've gone for the War Doctor, obviously, and Cinder. And um, then we kind of just based the rest of the team kind of off that. So we've got kind of the Fanood, we've got Winston Churchill, we've got River, and we've got Clara. But <laughs> hopefully you've... Um, seen uh, the, the new kind of update here on Legacy. These are actually the expert versions of River Song and Clara. Yes, but they're not black and white, I hear you exclaimed to the person next to you very loudly to through the window. That's right, they're not, because there's now a new feature whereby you can put your existing unlockable costumes onto the um uh the expert version one, which is really cool, which as a downside means that you can't tell them apart from the normal version. But on the negative side, I think the team, I think the team looks a lot better. It's in, it's in color. It's like that scene in the wizard of Oz where, you know, Dorothy walks through the door, Toto scuttles after her and Cal Technicolor colorness fills the world. And all those expert characters you've been using suddenly explode in glorious. I need a cool word for color. Multi-chrome. Multi-chrome. Yeah. 
like it. Ah, it looks like Susan is here. Well, Susan, let me know when you want to pop on. You can come on whenever you want. I'm just busy taking down the demons. Um, bang. And... So yeah, this is what I mean. Very much enjoying because because I I love having the expert characters. I love having the you know the version that they're kind of like an advanced version of the the characters that you've had already. Um, you know, especially for those players that have been playing a little bit lot, playing for a while, and those people you unlock early on. You know, like kind of like you know the Matt Smith Doctor, and their ability is good. But actually, when you get to the rest, the upper levels, you know, the, their abilities don't really kind of cut it anymore. So you get an expert version of the character, but then it's black and white, and it's a bit like, oh, but I want the color, man. I want to you know the, the the cones in my eyes need need some stimulation now. Now we can have that. Plus, you know, when you spent that time grinding Jenny and grinding levels to get those kind of special costumes, you want to be able to see them. And now we can. Looks like Susan's coming on in two minutes. Okay, so we've got two minutes to, you know, comb the old eyebrows, fix the old shirt, get the smile, practice the old voice. Well, hello, 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 hi, hello, uh, all right. You know, we'll have to work out which greeting we're going to use. Um, and so on. Now I've got my perk set to give me a bonus when I get a five times combo. So every time I get a first five times combo, we should get some extra womp. Yes, we did. Oh, and he keeps changing his weakness. How interesting. When he had that weakness for red, I really should have used all my abilities, but I didn't because I wasn't concentrating. I was too busy talking to you and practicing my greetings to Susan. Did I slap that person? Is someone talking to me? No. Yes, no. Because all the colours in the gems don't cut it. Well, the colours in the gems do cut it, but the, I want more colour. Look, if I want colour, I can have colour, okay? It's my thing. It's my thing. Five times combo, there we are. All right, Susan's ready. Let's add her to the show. Could we get, please get a posse welcome for... Susan from Tiny Rebel Games. And hopefully we will get a connection and hopefully soon we shall hear the subtle American tones of Susan. Good evening. The, the tinkling sound of me? Twi twinkling? Tinkling? Um, I'd go for um, twinkling think, over tinkling, but it... I think twinkling is better than tinkling, your, your, isn't your it? Your preference, right? <laughs> it's a different kind of show. Hello! Hello! And Lee's here too. Hi, Ali. Merry Christmas. I'm getting and ho, ho, comfortable. And happy, this is going to be a long one. Get ready, all of you. He's got his whiskey Pull up in front a chair. of him. He has I got puffy dinosaurs. I got good boy organics. Huzzah! What the hell is that? Organosaurus? Oh, yeah. He's stealing onions. Oh, and spilling them all over my new computer. You idiot. It's okay. I have a fix that. I'll oh just eat them. God. Okay, we need to talk about stuff. Get food away from my computer. So Susan told me that you had lots and lots to talk about, so I've got my talking out of the way, so I, I can just shut up and play while you guys announce everything and everything. Or eat lunch. Or eat. Or, <laughs> I was or trying to move eat. the laptop more towards my face so they could hear me. Can you move your coffee, please? Yeah. Sure. Over towards your whiskey. Awesome. Hi, what? everyone. Hello. I've got, um, I've got colored expert you. people that are Everyone expert else. Characters. I talk to you all the time. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The costume's awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I thought I thought I, I, I came in and hearing you uh, trying to say that there were there were differing opinions about the episode this week, and I loved it. I just want to be on the record for saying. Oh, that. don't start this. This is going to be a half hour discussion. We need that half hour. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I've, I've I've already got a question for George. You know about what he thinks about it because you know obviously George has written a lot about the War Doctor and Gallifrey. So now we need to know what he thinks of the way that Gallifrey was brought back. It's an important question. It, it's I can't wait for him to to talk about that. At half past. Right, let's go. Let's talk. Uh, all right. Where's the big Susan list? Where we it's, start? It's, Am I sitting on it? You've moved it. I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's under your bottom I've right now. I've lost it. Don't spill that. There's a lot of bad things going on here, Addy. We are so prepared today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. coming. Uh, we have stuff to talk about. George Mann's going to join us shortly, and uh, we're going to we're going to give out a code today for Cinder and Cinder's costume as well. Awesome, um, which which is cool. Uh, don't know how many people on the channel don't have that, but I know the Cinder costume was actually quite a hard level that it was in. So hopefully, some people will appreciate that. Maybe Athena's even in the channel. I'm not actually sure if Athena's here. It's, I got the sense she was going to. She asked when it was. We should do like a signature series Cinder signed by Athena. We should totally. That'd be cool. <laughs> and George and Paul. All of them. And me. All over the screen. And you and Abby. Yeah, exactly. It's warm in here. 
Um, yes. So let's see. So coming up. Why don't we talk? Uh, uh, why don't we talk about? Why don't we talk about the next two months? Sunday. Oh, yeah, let's okay. start. We'll start with okay. Sun- Sunday. I'd like to add is the first Susan Cummings designed level in a very long time. Oh yeah, but, I, so I designed. When so. the game launched, Susan and I laid out the first everything up to launch. We we went through and laid out and did the first pass of balancing on. So we we made. What was that 160 levels it was together? Crazy amount of levels. Yeah. It was a lot. I never wanted to touch the editor again. And then Susan really, yeah, you you sort of walked away from it. I took more of that role. But last night, Susan sat down in behind the designing desk. Yeah, and, designed a level. and I designed the 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 level for Donna Noble in the wedding dress for Sunday. So I hope you all like it. Everyone better be kind. Uh, Cherise played it. Said she liked it. She was probably being nice. I played it. Made it better. Yeah, and there's, and there's a there's a surprise appearance by by. Well, I don't want to say, should I? No. Okay, I won't say. Addy, Addy you'll smile. That's good. So I'll come on Sunday. It's not yeah, snowman, so is it? Is no, it what? No, no, no snowman. snowman actually. No snowman. We better no. go back and add Maybe snowman. I now. Go back and add snowman. <laughs> Maybe we'll have like thirty waves no, of snowman. No, that'll be for the signature students. <laughs> so then the next thing that we're designing is um is <laughs> signature. <laughs> So the plan for the signature series is starting on. I want to say it's the. You better you better open up the spreadsheet. Why don't I open up the spreadsheet? Find out what day it starts on. Starting on. I feel like there's this, there's this amazing like visual comedy thing going on right now. You guys need to turn on your camera because you seem to be like falling all over each other. And it's, it's like it a, sounds it's like Benny two Hills people know nothing about the project or video games. They just got in front of the microphone. <laughs> starting on Saturday the nineteenth. For five days. So far, we'll get more. But yeah, maybe more. Depends. Depends if we can get some more signatures. But for five days, we're going to have a new drop each day for the fan area. Uh, Sabra, uh, Van Gogh, Ace, uh, Ace, Joe, and uh, the Sixth Doctor. Um, so what's going to happen is it's one uh, level, five waves, paying tribute to five um, modern Christmas episodes. And each day, there'll be one of those waves will have a drop. So you could either play it each day and get a drop, or you come back at the end of the week and all five drops will be there. But that that's basically how the signature series is going to, to pan out. Um, we also have uh, plans for a special Christmas Eve, Christmas Day fan area gift from us. Uh, you'll you'll be getting on, on on login on mobile devices. You'll be getting the the velvet jacket costume for the twelfth Doctor, which looks <laughs> awesome. No, I don't think we've shown it anyway yet. Well, we're we'll also going to have up. to make it a drop in the in the experimental fan air level because Facebook people can't. The code doesn't work for them to be able to auto claim stuff. It's just they don't support it. So can we show the uh, velvet stuff, or is it still under lock? No, I'm still waiting for the final just, crew. Yeah, we made it look too young. We took like thirty years off of Capaldi, and Peter was offended by that. So, so we made it be aged a bit. Some wrinkles. Um, so I'm waiting to hear mm-hmm. that it's approved. But yeah. Yeah, the velvet jacket will be coming, and then of course we have our plans for um, the Christmas episode, which we're really excited about. So, Christmas episode, we'll do what we did last year. We'll do a level and a drop and an enemy uh, as soon as we can after it airs. Normally on the west east coast of USA, but we'll, we'll let you know when the yeah. patch is. So we're just working out now because it's right over Christmas. It's it's a tough thing to, to work the dates out on, but we'll we'll get it done. Why? Well, and then well, and then and then around. Let's have a look. Should we talk a bit about the event? Because uh, people know there's sort of something yeah, coming, but okay, now it's sure, a bit more finalized. Sure, 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 go on. Over the next, I think, sort of a week, you'll notice that a load of script is coming to the three anniversary levels because they're, they're the beginning of, of an event and the event's about to kick off. You'll, you'll see some more gameplay and some new scripting. And in a couple of weeks, a new baddie from the Doctor's deep, deep past and uh, will be coming into the game. And we're doing something really different from is it Fenric? in January and February. We're trying to do an event where the community, the, this evil thing will take over the game and do bad things. And the community has milestones and things they can hit to unlock a new set of, I can't say the word. It's the something event, but as soon as I say this, I say this word, it's gonna give it away. It gives it away. Players. But there'll be a, a set of event characters that will drop over six, six eight this, weeks. This- Classic enemy. And then you'll use that team to beat the enemy down at the end. As, as a community, we're trying something different. We're putting a load of new code in to track things, new types of drops. It's oh, something cool. Will there be like a website where people, or in-game where people can see Yeah, we're gonna, we have stuff in-game where you'll be able to track how the community's doing and where where the, the, the sort of the, this evil character is changing the levels and the stuff he's doing. So we have, we have a big source. And that's all... And it's a character you haven't seen before in the game. It's yeah, a, classic, a brand new character. enemy that some people are going to love. Yeah. I, I just know it. It's a I great sense classic. lots of like community bullying going on. Like, how, have you completed the level today? How many times have you completed the level? <laughs> like, four times today to <laughs> use the right character? We, no. No, every time we try to make a, a bit of content, we want it to be different from everything before. And, and when we said, watch you in January, February, I thought it'd be great to do like a community event 
that is different from anything we've done before. And then that'll lead into Bigger on the Inside Chapter 1, which we'll be talking to George about. Now, we have something to talk about. We have something which is just with the community, and we need them to do a vote, Addy, later. A yes, no vote in like 10 minutes when we've explained this, if you would be so kind. I would be very kind. No, just, I'm just saying that normally when you say later, what that means is we get to within the last 30 seconds of the show and go, oh, God, we forgot. Just saying. Now, this should be in about five to 10 minutes. We need to get this out of the way before George jumps on. So all of that is the plan for the next three or four months of legacy. And it's, it's all moving forward. And that is all just, you know, we have it all. Yeah, yeah it's going to be amazing. But and here's the but. Earlier this week, we started getting assets for the Christmas episode this year. And we're not spoiling it, don't worry. We're not going to spoil it. I'm just going to make some statements. It's the art, the costumes, the river costumes, the doctor costumes, the enemies. Peter has got us. It's, it's an amazing episode that it, we just can't do justice to in the way that we had planned, right? We'll do our normal Christmas episode that we've done for the last few years. But we want to suggest something to the community. Um, we want to do a director's cut of this episode that we would release early to mid Jan next year, where we would just take a crack at this episode and try to knock it out of the park and do a bunch of costumes and a bunch of allies and like four or five different backgrounds and, and spend some serious time on this. But the only way to fit that into the plans right now over Christmas, I, and like these plans are being made now, we, we first saw the assets two days ago. So yeah. we're just talking to you as we come up to these plans. We want to do a big director's cut of this level, something really cool, but it means we're going to have to put in the premium area because there's no other way to get this done in the next few weeks other than we need money to do it. And we don't need money now, but we need an idea that at some point enough people in the community are going to care about this for us to spend the Christmas doing this on three different countries. It's that, it's that or us like cherry pick a couple things and throw away we, the rest. Yeah. Which we'll, we, you know, we'll pick a few for the, you know, for the Christmas episode anyway, but we and we'll pick the best stuff we can, but it's going to be really sad. I think people in the community are going to be asking for the next few months, like where are these amazing river costumes and where are these amazing doctor costumes? Cause there was, there were just so many in this episode. It's a lovely episode. And it's a great episode that we really want to dive into. And we just, it just doesn't fit in. So it's, it's a yes or no question. Does the community think that it's worth us spending the few next few weeks to do a premium section of the game, which would cost probably about $2.99? Yeah. We're not talking a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, but we just, it's just no way to fit this in without destroying the next few months and moving things around that I'm not willing to do. But if the community wants us to spend our Christmases doing this, we will, we will have pests chained to a desk. We will design yeah. the best levels we can. We'll make and it'll it really... all be guaranteed drops like any other. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, because when we you say a, a direct. I don't focus. I'm just seeing tons of yeses. Would, and would, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to do it. We will do it. would like retell the story of the episode. What, what I've been saying to the team is we would, we would, we don't normally have the luxury of watching an episode before we make content when we're doing things on the fly. So we would do a Christmas level for free as we were planning to do anyway, but then we would huddle and we would decide the best possible way to transfer that episode into the best possible levels for the game. Like we would try really hard to put a lot of effort into this and make it a real standout thing. You know, we, it's, the rest of the game, we we do more for any episode of Doctor Who pretty much than any other game for any other TV episode of anything. We go through and we we pick the best things out of these episodes and we try to create gameplay representations of so many different confrontations of the Doctor. But this is a different, this is a whole different monster. You know, if we get time to put and time and money to put into some art and gameplay, we could do something really cool. Um, but as is our job on this game. It's not up to us. It's really, it's like up to you guys if you want it. It's hence, we want to vote. We want to see some numbers of how many people care or don't care because we're about to make a decision based on us. So what's the downside? So if, if they if they say yes, they get the content, it's two ninety nine. it'll contain loads of costumes and things like that. If they say no, what comes out instead? It's nothing. It's just that whole plan that we have planned anyway. It's just n nothing will change. We'll do the Christmas episode. Everything I mentioned earlier will still happen. It's just we won't be able to fit in a chunk of content in the next few weeks. So you're asking that, if people would be willing to, you know, they'd be, they'd be excited about it and they'd be willing to pay that to get all that kind of stuff. It, yeah, it's, it's a bit more than that, though. It's also, I, I don't want, the last thing I want is people come into the game and feel that they're being nickel and dimed for everything. So I feel really bad to put, put, any, put anything in there. But this is a, such a weird special case where we have the chance 
and the assets and the access to do something you know different that we haven't done before. But the downside is that you know is it's there. But but I think if we keep the price as low as possible, I mean like you know two ninety nine is easily to just easy to justify when you start looking at the number of levels we're going to do and the amount of drops and costumes and stuff. I think it's a no brainer for a fan of the game. But I'd like the community's thoughts on this. All right. If they, how, how would you like me to if they don't the like the idea but for some reason or another, then you know we need to know. How would you like me to word the question? How would you word the question? Uh, do, do, you, do, you, um, do you support? Should should, should, should. Tiny Rebel and Seed yeah. spend their Christmas this year making a director's cut version of the Christmas episode <laughs> for the legacy community? I'll I'll abbreviate that. Um, should Tiny Rebel Games? Do Christmas. <laughs> Do the Christmas act. Should and Susan have a Christmas day this year? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. No. What's Christmas? Yeah. All right. Votes up. But all of you vote. If you vote yes, you have to promise to defend us if we start getting so much hate yeah. that we're just adding more monetization and, and, and to this actually, game. And actually unlock it when it comes up. <laughs> Um, yeah, that would be useful too. <laughs> Damn it, I've been locked. I don't see any twos. That's exciting. I think we should vote too. You should just just show this one vote against it. It would be cool, Addy. I'm gonna, you, can, I'm you, can, you, like, can you chop this section of video out, and then we can point like Twitter to it and be like, hey, "This is why we're doing this." When we explain it. So they can see oh no, I see a vote too. <gasps> Quick, call them out and, and I shame know, them. We should shame them. No. <laughs> no, we We're really so want horrible. your honest vote. <laughs> well, it's still coming in, so I'll, I'll wait for a minute until they, they start coming out. Remember, you can only vote once. Uh, oh, I suck at getting past locks. I need a board reset. Should we call that a day there? Sure. Sure. You're getting destroyed by birdies. Don't Only in Doctor Who Legacy you get attacked by Don't for us to get a break. Actually, it's more work for Pest than it is for anybody else. You're, you're, you're well, no, I'm the licensing team and the lawyers yeah. and the actors and actors who have to sign off on everything over Christmas. I'm the design team. Yeah. And the tech team have to be on call to release new content. And a supplemental art team to make all the in-game stuff we need for this. So if, <laughs> if, if, just for argument's sake, we were to ask the... You know, I've heard a joke see, see, you know, yes, no, or... or, or the, <laughs> Wait, Addy was saying something. You talked over him. Sorry. Sorry, Addy, what'd you say? I was just going to say, just for argument's sake, if we were to ask Seed Studio if they voted yes, no, or maybe. And ah, I, I just think that would go down. Question, yeah. They seem open to this. They, you know, they're really excited. They are hardcore Whovians. It's really great, because we say things like this, and they, they get it as Whovians, that this would be a, a really cool thing to do. Like, jump into an episode of the Christmas. Oh, it's so much well, fun. Well, you've come out 64, and, and, and 64 was... yeses and six noes. Okay. That's pretty good. There we go. I, kn I know what I'm doing for the next few weeks, then. Well, let's, is, is George ready? Have you pinged George? Uh, he has accepted the thing, but, um, but I haven't yet messaged him, so I've been talking to you guys. I'll ask him. I'll, I'll message him and ask him if he's ready for me to call. Um, and I will rename his Skype as the War Doctor. Hmm. Okay, he says he's ready. Should we bring him on? Yes, definitely. How exciting. exciting. You got all those questions as well, right? Daddy? I've got loads of questions, loads and loads and loads of stuff. Um, from all sorts of sources. Hello, Mr. Mr. Man. Hello. Hey there, welcome to the show. I'm Addy, I'm here with Susan and Lee, and we are live on Twitch. Thank you so much for joining us. No Hello, problem. George. Hello, George. Hello, George. Hello, everyone. I feel Hello. like you guys are all old friends and you know each other intimately, and I'm like the guy that's just turned up and gone hi. So <laughs> how do you guys know each other, and like, how have you guys been working together over the last few months? Well, it's all really um, it started with the War Doctor, um, and... Um, and everything that happened with Paul Hanley originally doing a, the piece of art of Cinder from Engines of War. Um, and 
and I think was it wasn't Paul actually got in touch with you guys, didn't it he? Was. Yeah, Paul reached out to us and said, "Hey, you know, what what do you think about getting this into the game?" And we we said, "Absolutely." And then of course we found out you were playing the game, which made it even cooler. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so then I kind of went, "Guys, um, I love the game. How about I uh, I contribute a bit of story to to the if we're going to put." Cinder and into the game. Let's let's do something exciting. And uh, thankfully, these guys were all over it. So uh, so we worked together to put Cinder in with some some content, um, which fans seem to enjoy. Um, and and, and in fact, um, we're going to give out a code today for Cinder and for her costume as well as a as a treat while you're oh, out. Oh, fantastic! You've got yeah. two two hundred and twenty Hello Georges flying your way, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. If any of you guys have got any questions for George or Susan or Lee, if you use the usual exclamation mark question and then I'll peel up on my screen and I'll pick the best um, to put George's way. Sorry, guys, please, please carry on. So, yeah, so um, so time went by and, um, you know, coincidence fairly recently. um, I, you know, I've I've been focusing a lot on my on my writing career and um, done some novels and some comics, lots of Doctor Who comics. Um, and, um, and I, I dropped these guys a line and said, look, um, I'm, I still love the game. I'd still love to, to, to do some more work with you. Um, and it, I think, um, you know, it just hit at the right time when Lee was saying, um, it was, basically. it was crazy. Yeah. It was the night before about 10 o'clock. Susan had said to me, look, we need to look at bigger on the inside because we've written a story with requires loads of licensing rights that are 40 and 50 years old, and it's going to be a problem. And it's going to be slow. And then the next morning, George emails me <laughs> it was like nine o'clock in the morning saying, hey, any writing we can do together? And I was like, yeah, there absolutely is a great thing we can write together. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, it's a so, very, very, very good timing. Absolutely. So we've, um, we've, been, we've been brainstorming since and, and working out what we're going to do. Um, and we've got some great things coming. Yeah, yeah. So we've been really vague about it, but, you know, at, at a high level, it's... But at a super high level, the BBC would like us to start focusing and, and diving into individual doctors a lot more instead of all of them, because they're huge fans of every single doctor out there. Um, so we did that with the first doctor with the Sonic Adventures and bigger on the inside. The next story is going to be very heavily eighth doctor, war doctor, which works really well because both of them don't have that depth of canon that the other, you know most of the other doctors do. Uh, yeah. In terms of companions and, and locations, it's it's much more limited. But together, they work really, really, really well because they both have that shared history in the Time War that really none of the other ones do. Um, and and they have a small number of companions, and then they you know it, it it works really, really nicely as a as a as a two Doctor story. So the next, so the backbone of it is going to be these two Doctors dealing with the threat to the TARDIS. Well, we've, got, we've got we've um, we've got loads and loads of questions for, for for George and yourself from all sorts of sources from from Twitter from uh, from the Facebook page. Um, I've even had to ask some of the kids at my school hey, to submit questions. Shut up. So if, if um, I just I'll, I'll uh, shut up you, now, ask some questions, Addy. Well, well, well while, you, while you guys are chatting, if any of the questions are kind of relevant, is it okay if I just kind of fire them at you mid? Why didn't you just throw some yeah. questions, out, George? Um, so so re- relate to what you were saying um, because you just said that obviously the War Doctor is less kind of fleshed out than the other Doctors, obviously because he appears so little. So so how much freedom? Uh, this this is from Twitter, I think. Um, how much freedom did you have in fleshing out more of the War Doctor's character? Like, were you asked to make him a certain way, or were you given kind of freedom to kind of choose how you wanted to kind of represent him? And this is obviously referring to kind of both what the work you've done and in the so, of war. Sure. Uh, was, was, if I start with Engines of War, um, quite a lot of freedom, actually. Um, Surprisingly, so I, I'm I'm still amazed the BBC let me get away with everything that we put in the book, uh, if I'm honest, because um, the only stipulation that I really had um, from them was they wanted us they wanted a story that was very personal for the Doctor but also epic, mm-hmm. so it had to work on both levels, and they wanted um, the War Doctor to, to be portrayed as he was on screen. So we were very much at the end of the Time War in the run-up to everything that happened in Day of the Doctor, really, mm-hmm. uh, rather than going delving further back uh, and, and looking at the war. So so that's kind of why I decided to to almost run it directly in as a prequel. So, you know, you, you almost get to the end of Engines of War and you can see the Doctors on that path to going, right, I'm fed up now, I'm going to go and, and, and steal the moment and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take things to the next level. Um, so I started thinking about all... Well, you know, they wanted a personal journey for the doctor as well. So I started thinking about well, what what's what would push a, a man or a doctor, a time lord, to that that point. What would make them think I'm prepared to go and press that button? Um, 
what, what was a straw that broke the camel's back? And that's where Cinder came into it, really. Um, and, and what happens to her in the book. Um, but uh, but I'd like to that. Sorry, go ahead. Just to reinforce something George said a second ago, that it, it really, from our side too, it's so much of a pleasure working with the guys in Cardiff and at BBC Worldwide. Because yeah. they just give you so much freedom to go and do these things. And so many times I've sent script over, I'm like, there's no way they're going to say yes to this. <laughs> but I, you know, you, you write into the canon of the world, it makes sense. And it's, you know, it's a great addition to the, to the, the whole canon. It's, it's really fun. I, and I we haven't, that's well, exactly it. We Sorry. haven't mentioned before, George, that, and I, I'm going to mention it now very lightly. Uh, we've been given permission to start ex- thinking about our first creature, which is going to be unique to legacy. The first legacy created creature that will appear in our game as part of this, you know, the doctor world. And George and I are going to be, that's going to be part of the next chapter, big on the inside. We're working very heavily on crafting a story about our first unique monster in our world, um, which they've given us, you know, it's a, a, a light nod that we can do, which is amazing. Uh, having worked with other IP holders, yeah. that amount of freedom is just astounding. Yeah. I think that's, that's the that's the thing. I the sense I always get from um, from working with those guys is that they the biggest concern is that we tell a great story, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 we get the tone right. And I think within that gives you so much latitude to to develop and do exciting new things. And as long as you as long as you're not um, well, actually, no, I was going about to say as long as you're not contradicting stuff that's gone before, but actually you can do that as well as long as you're doing it for a good reason. I think it's very much about um, as, long as, as long as you're not lazily contradicting things that have gone before. You can purposely yeah. set out to do it. That, that seems to be, yeah, the golden rule is it needs to fit and be you know, understandable within the context of the canon of the, sto- of the, you know, the characters. And we, we face the issue with, we really want to get the winders from the beast below in the game and because they're the sort of a gray area and o- over and over again, they said no. And then I wrote story, which explained why they would be on your team. And they were happy with that because it's explained away in the narrative of the story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's all about learning where you can push and then using that to make the best possible, you know, bit of creative art. What was it like, like putting writing for a, a doctor who is actually kind of quite undoctory, you know, he's, cause he's like, you know, there's this very big, big build up to him, you know, in the, uh, what's it called? Night of the doctor, you know, that when, 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 when the eighth, when the eighth regenerates, you know, he's like, you know, I'm not going to be a doctor now. I'm going to be a warrior. And, you know, Matt Smith's doctor is very much like, you know, he's my guilty secret. So, you know, he, this obviously has to be a doctor. that's very different. You know, he's not just like, you know, in quotes, the good guy, like, like the others ones. So how, how did you approach that kind of aspect of the character? Well, I think he's, <laughs> It's an interesting one, this, because I think clearly there's when you see John Hurt on screen, he's at the end of his regeneration. Mm. Uh, um, and he's clearly a weary warrior. He's he's been through a hell of a lot. Um and he's tired of it. And that's and I think that's part of the thing that's pushing him towards doing what he's doing. But I, you get the sense that he's he's a doctor who um he, he knows what needs to be done and he's gonna do it. He's going to do whatever it takes to 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 make sure the universe survives this the horrific conflict that's going on, um, even towards the end. Even if that that means pressing that button and and, and committing genocide on on two races. Um, so, it, and, but he doesn't live with that lightly. It's not he's not become a a callous um, warrior. You know, he's not he's not he's not a guy who's who's switched his conscience off. Mm-hmm. He just. He's the guy. He's, it's almost because he's because he's the doctor because he's got this weight of history and um, because he knows um, he knows what he's doing is horrific. It's it's weighing down on him, and I think that's that's what John Hurt portrayed so well when we saw him on screen. It was you know, it's it's a burden that he's got he's carrying around with him. Um, so I don't I don't think he's going into anything lightly, um, but. It, and and I also think he's still the doctor fundamentally. He, it's because it's also about self belief, and and the, he doesn't call himself the doctor, but everyone else to everyone else he still is the doctor. He's 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 just the doctor who's had to go through this horrific mangle of of the war. Um, so I, so I think a lot of it for me was about getting that guilt across, and then showing him doing a few things that you wouldn't see necessarily on the TV show, like with the novel. One of the the opening scene is him flying the TARDIS through the centre of a Dalek saucer and smashing it to pieces, um, and that was very purposeful. something which couldn't work under budgetary budgetary concerns. <laughs> exactly, but it, it was a very purposeful kind of opening gambit for the book to go right. This 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 is not the Doctor you know from before, um, so you get to you get to do that, and you know. It's interesting 
you're starting to see him pop up in other areas now, like the Titan comics and, you know, they, they've got pictures of him on the cover of some of the comics and he's holding a gun. You know, this is not something that we see the Doctor do very often. Well, yeah, there's that lovely scene right at the beginning of the, the 50th anniversary one, I think, where the War Doctor kind of casually blows up a couple of Daleks and then kind of wanders off, you know, in a way that the other Doctors don't. Um, yeah. M- mentioning the comics, uh, we've got a couple of questions here about um, Cinder, who was obviously your like custom companion that you, you, you created for the book. Um, have, is Cinder likely to appear in any of the big Finnish adventures or um, again in the comics? And, and someone asks very nicely if they can hear Cinder's name. Um, so I'll, I'll let you answer either or both of those. Uh, <laughs> Cinder doesn't want anyone to know her real name. She's like the doctor. Um, <laughs> she left behind a long time ago. Um, so I've, I've been asked that question a few times and, and I always skirt around it. Um, well skirted. <laughs> is, is Cinder likely to crop up elsewhere in Doctor Who canon? I don't know, to be honest, at this stage. Um, I mean, obviously, she's in in the Legacy game because you know, in that in that previous instalment of story we did, we have a pluck from the Time War um, uh, to for help fight the Daleks, and um, and I think you know she, she's going to be she, she's going to be in the next part of the, the Legacy story we're doing as well, um, as in. Uh, <laughs> With the further stuff, the novels and uh, no, audios, I'm, I mean, I, I guess this is a spoiler for anyone who hasn't read the book, I suppose, but obviously, you know, the Cinder's adventure starts and ends in that book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, um, I'm loath to, to go too far in, um, in plucking her out of that and, because I think it takes something away from the story and also then takes something away from the War Doctor and what happens because because it is one of the, the things that's driving him on to go and, and, and get the moment and, um, and and do what he does. I think it, it if we're too casual about taking her out and using her all over the place, then I think it, it detracts from that story. Um, so we'd have to, it'd have to be the right story. I think I agree with you. I think that's, I think that's so important that, you know, sometimes a work can be, kind of devalued in retrospect, you know, by, by putting something that kind of comes after or uses the same characters or plays with those ideas, it can sometimes spoil the enjoyment of, you know, I know mean, it's a cheesy example, but you know, the, you know, the, you know, the star Wars, you know, episode four, five, six, everyone loves them. And then episode one, two, three comes along and it kind of slightly devalues what came before. Cause it didn't set it up very well, that, that kind of thing. So I completely agree with you about, you know, the, the, you know, protecting your characters and, and keeping them special. Yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's also, it's about the, the, the experience that people have had reading that book. You know, the amount of people who, who wrote to me afterwards and said, you know, I was in floods of tears at the end. Um, and, you know, that, that was, again, that was very purposeful. That's the reaction I was aiming for. And, and I don't want to undermine that. That said, there is room, I think, for carefully done stories where we're talking about the time war and, and what's going on in the time war. And I, one of the opportunities we've got the the story that Lee and I are, are putting together allows us to play with time in a way that it, it, it works nicely. So 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 she is definitely going to be popping up here. Um, I think Big Finish do have got their own um, plans for the for what they're doing with the War Doctor and and um, any companions or other characters that they're introducing. Um, and other than that, we'll have to see, I guess. So loads one, of people, one thing of people. to sort of expand that just a little bit is that, you know, one of the really exciting things about this project right now is that the, the War Doctor is sort of going through a lot of canon building over the next six, eight months that George is leading. And it's great to be part of that, where we're working, you know, we already started talking to Titan about, get, you know, the, uh, the number of allies the War Doctor and the Eighth Doctor have together is quite small. So we're talking to uh, Extended Universe IP owners about getting some of those characters in here so we can use the story to also sort of bulk out uh, War Doctor and uh, Eighth Doctor. Generally, we're gonna, we're, I think we mentioned last week, we're, gonna, we're doing a lot more with Titan now. They're getting us a lot of art so that we can start doing sort of a more regular inclusion of Titan Comics art. Yeah, 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 including, yeah, all the stuff we need. It's awesome. Well, and I while, think we're, it's- while we're talking about uh, Cinder, a massive thank you to both Susan and Lee. Um, for those of you that don't have Cinder and her costume, um, the code on screen will give all of you um, a copy of her. Sadly, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm afraid this will have already expired. But for those of you that are watching on Twitch, this will be live um, for the next uh, two and a half hours. Um, and it's three, seven, three, five, three, four, six, nine, nine, two, three, four, um, four, seven, seven, two. Um, so you can either just jot that down and put it in after the show, or you can go and put it in right now. And I'll copy that into the, the channel as well. So thank you very much, um, Susan and Lee, for very generous of you. 
Um, we've had loads of people say how much they love Engines of War and the War Doctor adventures, and um, I've got a whole bunch of people um, on Twitter that say like it, and like loads, loads of the kids at my, I'm a, I'm a teacher, and loads of the kids at the school have said it's their favourite novel. In fact, the librarian said that it's his favourite um, Doctor Who novel of all time. Um, so oh, wow. uh, one of the questions that have come up, I, I have to say, I'm a bit of a Terence Dix fan, but I grew up in the 80s. Um, uh, I don't, yeah, I'm a big Terence Dix fan. <laughs> um, but so one question that's come up a few times is any more book, any more books in in the pipeline? You know, are, are you working working on any more Doctor Who fiction other than the game, of course? Um, I'm I am working on some some more Doctor Who um, fiction and some and some more um, Doctor Who books, um, as well as some um, some BBC audios as well, um, which are, well, they're, they're twelfth Doctor ones, um, but. Um, Nothing in the pipeline for the War Doctor just yet. Um, I, I wouldn't rule it out entirely, but there's obviously there's lots of other stuff going on at the moment. The um, for, I think for for the the books guys, BBC books, they tend to be anchored very much in what's going on on the TV show at any given time. Mm-hmm. Um, so the War Doctor book obviously came out. Following the the fiftieth anniversary, it was it was done as a as part of that big celebration. Um, they've, they've just I think this week released um, a book about Ashilda and um, her further adventures. Um, so their their books tend to be very anchored in the current show um, and don't look back too much. So um, so no, I'd never say never. Certainly, um, and you know I'm 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 very anxious to return to the character. To be honest, I'd love to write more. Um, so ongoing conversations is what I'd say. <laughs> do, do you enjoy writing for the, the different doctors? Like, is that like creatively a fun thing to do? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's interesting kind of juxtaposing them and, and, and trying to capture the different voices from the different performances and the characteristics. Um, I'm trying to collect a full set to be honest and write for all of them. I, I, I'm, I'm just over halfway at the moment. Oh yeah. Which, uh, ones, which ones have you written for? So I've done the first, the third, the fourth, the fifth, uh, eighth, eleventh, twelfth, and War Doctor. Please tell me you have like a chart on your wall that you're kind of ticking off as you know, as like life, <laughs> life goals. Uh, it's not actually on my wall, but um, but it's it's in my memory banks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, it is it is really interesting just to um, you know talking about comparing and contrasting the doctors. I've been writing um, Eighth Doctor comics for Titan recently, um, and it's the Eighth Doctor t- towards you know not quite the not quite at Night of the Doctor stage, but in the run up to that, that's the costume he's wearing in the comics, and it's really interesting that in the in Doctor Who Legacy that we're going to be putting the kind of that version of the Eighth Doctor and the War Doctor together because all that stuff we talked about be- before, you know the the, the the doctor choosing not to use the name, the doctor that he's, he knows he's going to have to do these horrific things and he's going to have to change fundamentally the core of his being. Um, putting those two characters together into a story for the first time is, is really exciting for me because you get to see some fireworks, I think, but you know, that then they're very dissimilar to each other in a way that perhaps some of the other doctors aren't that dissimilar from each other. Um, so that's going to be a really exciting thing to play with. Did you, um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I mean, some of the, I mean, the, the the multi doctor episodes are, you know, some of them are kind of most popular because of the kind of like the the kind of like the gimmickness of it. But to actually have two very, very, very different doctors getting together must kind of take that even kind of further, um, which must be great fun. Um, yeah, two, two doctors so close to each other in 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 kind of um, in continuity as well. You know, Paul McGann's doctor actually actively making that decision to become this other man. Who, who I guess he's, he's resisted for so long. Um, you know, he's been trying to avoid the warp until that point. So he's, what's he going to think when he actually sees him and, he, and and finds out some of the stuff he's been up to? Um, I, I've been, I've been put like, as long-term listeners know, I've been trying for the last 18 months to do the best eighth doctor story that I could possibly can. And, and I've started things and stopped them, but it's been all about finding the right eighth doctor stories. You know, I think, I think this is, Everything George just said is is the crux of why I think this is so interesting. That why this is like a great eighth Doctor story to get in the game, um, alongside the War Doctor. I'm so excited about it. 
Okay, I'm going to uh, Lee, Lee and Susan. This is this is to, this is to you as well. Well, let, let, let's go for the controversial question. Okay, people have very different opinions about this week's finale. Like uh, the, the general reviews seem to say that people love it, but some people are very against it. Um, you know, they, there's lots of kind of Clara stuff going on, but I want to talk in particular about the Gallifrey bit because one thing that certain, certain some people seem to have quite strong opinions on is like Gallifrey wasn't really the focus of the finale's episode. You know, it, it kind of like Gall- Gallifrey was kind of there and it started very Gallifrey based, but then it really went much more onto the doctor and Clara's um, relationship. So, so perhaps, perhaps George first and then others kind of picking in. I mean, how, George, how did you feel about the return of Gallifrey? Obviously someone that's kind of written about it and talked about it in the war doctor. I mean, were you, were you pleased with the way that it was brought back or was there elements that were kind of like, Oh man, I wish I'd done this. And of course you are welcome to sidestep the question if you don't like it. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I really enjoyed it, but I, um, I, I thought you know it was, it was interesting to get that that reaction from from the Gallifrey and the Doctor. Um, but really, I I think that's the that's the key of it for me is it. I don't think it was a Gallifrey story. I, I, I hope they do a Gallifrey story later. Um, but that story wasn't about the wasn't about Gallifrey. It just happened to be set partly on Gallifrey, mm-hmm. and, the, and the important part about the bits you saw on Gallifrey is. Um, is how they reacted to the doctor and how the and the doctor behaved because for me that finale which I I, I, I loved I have to say I, I really did um, for me it was about it was it was very much a personal story about the doctor and the and actually the doctor going too far yeah. uh, uh, and and to the extent that he even went back to Gallifrey you know told the president to get lost um, and and kind of bullied his way in to use the equipment to, to try and save Clara. Um, and, and seeing Clara realizing that, you know, realizing he'd gone too far and, and, and not really supporting his, his actions. Um, and I think that was the, that was the key thing for me about the episode. So Gallifrey for me there was a, was a tool. Uh, it was like a, a, something to reflect the doctor against. It wasn't, it wasn't a big Gallifrey based story, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, I think that helps to explain it. Cause I, mean, I, I guess I was, I'm just hoping for my big Let's Rescue Gallifrey story, you know, like, cause it's, and, and I kind of hope, you know, cause obviously it's timey wimey. I, so, I kind of hope in the future we can still get that, you know, the, the Let's Get Gallifrey backstory, but I, I think the moment might have passed. Uh, Lee and Susan, what's your view on the return of Gallifrey? I, I think it was, I think Moffat's, you know, reasoning behind this episode was, I need to introduce Gallifrey you know, for the future. Like I, I see Gallifrey probably being a big part of the next season in the way that it was in seasons past, where there were strong ties in every episode to something that was going on in Gallifrey or that Gallifrey had set up the season storyline. It is, is, hasn't been that for quite a while up till now, right? And it was in the background. So maybe next season, it's more of a uh, up, up in your face sort of Gallifrey experience. I, but I think that's a lot of weight to carry and finish off the season that was just written. And I, I really liked the balance that he struck as a writer between this really heavy st- doctor storyline, which dives into some real deep past of the doctor and sets up Gallifrey. You know, we, we know where what's happened with Gallifrey. We know the political setup on Gallifrey now, even though we don't really think about it, which is great for a writer for next season. Cause he has a lot to play with. Mm. I really liked it. I really liked it a lot. I want to watch it again really quickly. Doctor who political drama. I really enjoyed it too. I mean, I enjoyed it for the fact that I think it gave sort of the, the closure to the, the doctor and Clara thing that, um, her death didn't really bring, you know, the fact that they got to you know, the we should just we should just start it. writing. I should do a little mini arc in the fan air, which is just Maisie Williams and Clara. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I wonder if they'd go for that. I'm going to ask. Right? I'm going to be ask the BBC <laughs> team if we can do a little spin off <laughs> like adventure. Those adventures in the diner. Yeah. <laughs> I That's love it. Should be. It should be a sitcom set in a diner, and everyone can <laughs> comes in. Yeah, how cute! Like, where, where everybody knows your name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very Grant Naylor. Yeah, the right? diner spinning through space. Addy? Sorry. Is that? I said it was very like Red Dwarf watching that diner spin through space. Yeah, yeah. It was. You just, you just need to kind of cry and cleaning it to be in the. Uh, <laughs> you could do the, uh, the Douglas Adams, the uh, yeah, restaurant at the end of the come. universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, George, obviously you you write for lots of different things, but I'm sure watching there will be lots of people who would love your job. I mean, how how did you get involved in writing for Doctor Who? Like, what was your route in? What was my route in? Wow. Um, I think the first official piece of Doctor Who that I wrote was a um, a short trip, short story for Big Finish when they were still publishing the short trip books. Um, and did you approach Which, them and say, "Hey, I'm an author"? Or how did that work? No, I mean to be honest, uh, back in those days, I'd, I think I'd, I'd 
done my first novel. I've written a non-fiction book and I think my first novel was out or just about out. And actually it was one of the editors I was, one of the American editors I was working with on, on some of my own creator own fiction introduced me to the person who was editing the book and said, George is, is, you know, is, is just an up and coming writer. He's, he's got his first book or two out. He's got a book deal for more books. He's a huge Doctor Who fan. Um, could he pitch a story? And, um, and it was that introduction that led to me writing the, my first story, which is a fifth doctor story. Um, and then on the back of that, I went on to do a couple of audios for big finish. Um, and then actually a little while passed before I really did anything else. And, um, it was, it's, you know, it, it all coincidence really that led to me doing my first novel for BBC books, a happy coincidence, mm. um, is that a, a mutual friend, um, who worked at a publisher had met Justin Richards as the consultant editor on the range at a party, uh, a publishing party. And, um, I, she was an old friend I'd just reconnected with after five or six years. Um, and I'd given her a copy of one of my books to read and she got talking to Justin and he said, Oh, are you reading any good books at the moment? She said, Oh, actually I'm reading a book by an old friend called George Mann. And Justin said, Oh, George Mann, um, you know, I've read his books and I've been trying to get hold of him, find out how to contact him. Cause you know, I know he's done some Doctor Who stuff, and I, um, I'd really like him to get to to write for the range. Um, so she re- she connected us, and, um, and and that's kind of how it, it went from there. Really, you've got lots of obviously you're working with with, with Lee on Legacy. You've worked with the comics. You've you've written the book. I mean, do, do you see yourself now as a Doctor Who writer, or, or is that what is that one of your many strings now? Obviously, because you said you've done other other. Fiction in the past. Yeah, I think it's a it's it's a very important um, string to my bow. Um, it's uh, as I say, I, I've been a Dot Two fan since I was a little boy, and uh, it's a long time. Um, and um, it's a big part of my life, um, a part, big part of my psyche. And it's and it's Dot Two's influenced everything that I've written, uh, whether it's my own stuff or or you know other franchises. Um, so I I never want to be too too many steps away from from writing more Doctor Who stuff, but. Um, I also, you know, I I have my own ongoing series of of, of novels, which have are kind of like a, a Victorian mystery novels fancy, with a fancy twist. They're they're a bit like a mashup of Doctor Who, Sherlock Holmes, and Stephen Peel from the Avengers. Um, and I'm uh, I've, there's six books in that series mm-hmm. and more to come. So that's 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 also very important to me. And, uh, you know, and I, I see myself as as having both elements in my career really. And increasingly, I want to get into writing more comics. I've loved writing the Doctor Who comics. Is it, um, is it very different writing for a comic than because obviously you I assume you don't do the artwork, you do the yeah, it's just the script, um, and then you work with the artists and collaborate on you know how how it's going to appear on the page. Yeah, it is different because it's um, when you're changing mediums, it's it's you've got to figure out how the medium works. And when you're writing a novel, obviously it's it's all on you. Everything, it's all down to you and, um, and all down to the words you put on the page. So you, you, you're showing every description, um, you know, every, every snippet of, of action and in a comic, you're actually, the action is what happens between the panels. Yeah. Um, which is a really important thing to learn. Um, so, and then, the, and obviously a, a huge part of the storytelling is visual. So you, you got to work hand in hand with the artist and it's, it's not just your work in a way that a novel is actually a very personal piece of work. A comic's not, it's, it's a collaboration. Um, same with audio because you've got the performance of the, of the actors and, and actually same with working on Doctor Who Legacy with Lee, because you know, it's a, what, what we've got to think about is what's going to be fun to play as well. What, what, what does Lee want to happen in the game? That's going to be a really exciting, different angle for, um, for players. And then we want to put a story around that, that makes sense, puts it in context and is exciting. So for me, that's really interesting because it changes the way that you approach the story. Lee's, Lee's very good at that. Cause it is, uh, obviously I'll suck up to him cause he's here, but it is true. Cause <laughs> it, when you're doing legacy, effectively what you've got to have is some sort of fight about every 30 seconds <laughs> without it, without it feeling forced or, <laughs> Well, you know, because it's a game, isn't it? And you, you can't have like people, you know, people scrolling through dialogue for half an hour. And but you can't also have, you know, oh, hang on, we're in the middle of this bit of plot line, but I suppose we'd better just shoot this random piece of dust that walked past. Um, so you've got to find a way to have a battle every, pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah. Like any comic book fan should really read Understanding Comics by I think McLeod wrote it, and yeah. it explains that you know what 
the idea, that concept that happens between the panes, which is the, the central thing. But video games doesn't have that. And I try to explain to some people, like, there's you need to wrap story in, in gameplay. You know, it needs to make this thing needs to exist for gameplay purpose, not just a story one. And it's it's a hard, a hard thing to explain. So I find it best to just hand off. Like, okay, I, I can do design, but you guys can do your things better than me. Go and do your thing as best you can, and I'll do as best thing I can. And it, it works really well. And I'm really excited about I'm working, working with George over the next couple of months on this. Yeah, I mean, and just for me, you know, some of the notes Lee sent me recently saying, you know, I think I'll, I'd like to see this happen in the game. And, I, and as a player of the game, I was thinking, wow, that's that's a cool little um, thing that people are going to really enjoy. And it makes sense in the context of the game as well. So... It's yeah, it's 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 really a very different medium and, and very exciting because of it. Speaking of mediums, is it an ambition of yours to ever write for the episode, the you know the TV episode itself? Is that something you'd like to be involved with? Oh yeah, yeah, I'd I'd, um, I'd, <laughs> I'd drop everything to do it. Of course I would. Um, that's, that would be a dream come true. Um, but you know, it's I I've written I've written in, in a lot of mediums now. I've written a lot of novels. Um, but I'm not an experienced TV writer. And, um, you know, I think um, that calls probably a few seasons away, put it that way. Mm-hmm. But I will, you know, that's, that's, that's absolutely on the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> um, question, question here from uh, uh, clearly a, a mega fan. <clears throat> I mean, this is quite a long question, so apologies for reading it out in full. When the Doctor reaches Gallifrey, he enters the Death Zone and the Tomb of Rassilon and even comes across an imprisoned Basura, the fallen president. All of this is taken from the classic episode, The Five Doctors. Is this a particular favourite episode of yours as much of the story from that episode is revisited in your novel? Yes. Um, it, I mean, it is a particular favourite of mine. There's another reason that I went I, I, I went back to The Five Doctors um, because it was a big anniversary special and, and kind of what I was writing was part of the big anniversary special and I thought it was um, a nice callback. Um, one of the things I was trying to do with Engines of War was, was write a book that felt like it was a feature film made in the hiatus period. So I wanted to have one foot in the classic series and one foot in the, in new who basically mm-hmm. in terms of how I approached it and the, and the continuity references. So I, there's quite, a, there's quite a lot of references in there. I, I, I hope I managed to write them in a way that wasn't alienating for people who didn't know all of that stuff. Um, but I wanted it to be to, for people to get a bit of a frisson, you know, if there's, if, if they've, they've watched all those classic episodes and they see these, things cropping up like, you know, the harp and, um, the mind probe and all of that stuff. Um, and the death zone, that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, an episode that's always stuck with me. Um, like you, you know, like you, I'm a huge Terrence Dix fan. Um, and, um, I think that, that episode was, well, the, the, the you know, it was, it was a, a big joyous celebration of everything Doctor Who. And, and again, that's, that I was kind of trying to, trying to do something similar. So it seemed sensible to, to call back to it. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on tonight, George. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on and having such an interesting insight into um, your well. books and your work. Um, is, is there anything you'd like to plug or share or, you know, what things you currently work on? You'd like, obviously the game, of course, but, you know, if I could just hand the microphone over to you, you know, feel free to plug anything <laughs> and anything you want. Well, I think, um, well, thank you. I think for this, for, certainly for this particular audience, I think, you know, obviously I'm really excited about the game and the work we're doing in the game. I'm really loving um, working on the Eighth Doctor comics and I'd encourage people to check those out because we'll get a sense from those of, of how I write the Eighth Doctor as well. Uh, and, you know, hopefully some of that will come across in, in what we're doing with the game as well. Um, and for anyone who's a fan of the current series, um, there's a a series of BBC audios at the moment, the, um, the winter stories, um, which myself and James Goss have been, have, co- have co-written. Um, so he's done two and I've done two a series of four linked audios and they, they were great fun to do as well. So, um, if anyone's missing Clara, she's in those. Um, <laughs> so, um, we haven't really said goodbye to her yet, so we, we should do. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's me really. But um, thank you ever so much for having me on. You know, a huge oh, it's fan. been lovely having you on, George. Thank you for coming. 
No problem. Any time. Any time. Yeah, thank you so much. There, there are lots and lots of thank you, Georges, flying up in the chat at the moment. So thank you. Thank you so <laughs> Thanks much. Thanks for listening, everyone. And and hopefully we'll talk again when um you know when, when we've got more uh, bigger on the inside. Yeah. yeah, early early January. Should we should yeah mid January come back on yeah, and we'll talk about where we are. Too. Yeah, yeah. The next yeah the next piece together, pixel guys on to talk about their side of this whole crazy endeavor. Yeah, make it look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That, would be, that would be perfect. Um, Susan, do we have any um, thing we can publicly talk about for the Cardiff trip yet on the 22nd? I, it's been really hard getting this one together because we have so much going on. I think we're going to, I hate to say this, downplay it. I still want to do it. I think that we should tape it like you suggested, Addy. I know Peter's coming. You're coming. We'll be there. And I think the sort of thinking is if anyone is planning to come, that we'd love to see you. We'll probably do it at the pub. We'll keep it really low key and we'll tape it and we'll play it later because it's becoming such a stress trying to get this thing together. Okay, cool. Is that fair? That works for me. Yeah, I, I suggest, for those of you watching the show, I suggested to Susan, because we had some problems with the internet last time that we uh, record the show and then I come back and I, and I play it into Twitch maybe the day or two day or two days later. But so, so you guys get to see all the fun that we're having, but watchable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I should say, I don't want to give out too much information about this. It's kind of like keep your eyes on all the normal channels. But this weekend, we believe we're going to be part of a promotion that's going to include a never before seen costume from Clara to bathrobe from last Christmas's episode and also a new ally, uh, all as part of promotional code. There'll be more news about it over the weekend. Either I will fill everyone in or Cherie will because I'll be traveling. Um, but yeah, this weekend there'll be a new uh, Clara costume finally coming. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, uh, and one last note, support stuff. Just a few quick things. Yeah. Facebook, we know there are people still having issues with saving to the cloud on Facebook. I know it sucks. We're really trying to figure it out. Facebook has not been exceedingly helpful on it. Um, Jack is still trying to work it through. We haven't forgotten you. I know people are asking for information about that. Um, the patch issue that was going on yesterday seems to have totally gone away. And one last thing I want to clarify, because Sheree told me there were some questions about it. Expert characters. Um, we're sort of staging in their access to costumes from their counterparts. You don't actually unlock the counterpart's costume, though. That isn't a costume, right? And I know it's a bit confusing because some of the expert characters look different than their counterparts. So, but but the the plan is any costume that their character can unlock, they can now unlock in expert mode. So I hope that clears it up. Let us start hearing for the questions. It's all working exactly as planned, though. Okay. Um, I have been... Uh, playing with the Doctor Who Little Big Planet costumes. You've never seen the 12th Doctor look so cute as when awesome. he's uh, scuttling around. Um, you can see my review of that, uh, which is on my YouTube channel, and I will be doing a review of all the Matt Smith costumes um, probably m probably tomorrow night now. So, do again, just check out um, the – I'll probably be streaming some of it, in fact, and, but that's also my YouTube channel as well, and uh, that's very, 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 very cool. Okay, any final things to plug? Otherwise, I think we're there. If George is still here, thank you again. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, uh, lots of people seem to be tweeting George now. I can see it at the top of my screen. <laughs> um, anyone? Are we done? I think so. I always a uh, uh, small blue monkey uh, in your awesomeness. If you want to email me uh, and help coordinate, you probably have a better sense than I do of who's thinking they can actually get to Cardiff on the 22nd. Um, because I would like it to be fun for whoever is planning. And I am still trying to do some cool things. It's just for some reason, everybody else is being really slow and trying to resolve it with me. And it's just turning into a headache. But I do want it to be fun. So, to yeah, email me if you think you're going to be there and we'll try and, and sort it all out. Addie's coming. Peter's coming. We'll be there. We will do something. It'll be cool. Um, but I just, I'm getting nervous about the fact that it's less than two weeks away. All right. Thank you so much. Well, take care, everybody. It has been fantastic. Take care. Lovely, lovely show. And um, this will be up on YouTube as soon as possible. So do share it with your friends if you think they would love to hear our interview with George Mann, which I think was pretty damn wonderful. He was an, a wonderful guest. We must get him on again. It was really, really interesting um, and fun. Right. Take care, everybody. We will see you soon. Goodbye.